Wow. That was beautiful. Annie, your invocation was perfect. The meditation with Rob stepping up to do the reading, you'll find how in alignment it is with the talk today. And the meditation, um, the, the chant, uh, thank you, Bob, for the meditation. And uh, Alora, I hope you know how much tears of sweet love I get when I experience your uh, chants that you compose. Thank you so much. Ah, well, aloha. I, I'm sorry to co opt that word so often, but it means the indigenous Hawaiian meaning is so perfect for, for my talk today, and I'll, I'll get in and explain that in a little bit. But uh, ah, how have you been? I'm, I'm looking at the monitor. I should be looking up at the, at the camera, but your faces are on the monitor, so that's where I want to, to put my eyes. Ah. <laughs> How's your world been? If it's been like mine, um, gosh, we've had a week where we've probably been focusing on, the, on those mass shootings. You know, we've had um, a couple months ago, we were probably focused in on the national instability for the whole past year. You know, our focus and our... Um, drive, our hearts have been open to Black Lives Matter and of course the pandemic. And when everyone is focusing on the same thing, it produces a powerful direction of, of movement and of manifestation. And uh, so I'm going to be talking about that a little bit today. Um, basically, many years ago, I had a friend um, share a talk at the Boise Center for Spiritual Living. His name is Claire Bowman, so thanks, Claire. But he started a talk, and he asked us to envision a funnel above our head. So I'm going to ask that we all do that now, if you don't mind. A short little mini meditation. There's going to be a couple of them in the rest of my talk. So imagine this funnel or a, a cone, tri inverted triangle type shape, and just allow the goodness and the light and the bounty of spirit flow through the funnel and into you. Mm, breathe that in. Feels wonderful, doesn't it? Well, as my friend kept talking, he eventually said, how can you imagine your funnel to be so small? Why don't you make it bigger and wider? Take in more. Receive more good of, the, of spirit. And that's what I have contemplated and have recalled many times over the years. So maybe during a meditation, my yoga, breathing exercises, I would purposely envision this funnel and expand it. And so now I ask, what's in that funnel? What are we receiving? What are we um, putting into that funnel? Well, a huge infinite world that is always present and awaiting our recognition of it. It is a world of light. Now I'm going to dispense with that word light because it's too mundane. This world is luminous. The world out there is luminous. It is omnipotent and powerful. It can do anything. Intelligence and wisdom I even like to think that it is full of all the information and data from all the Kashic karmic records and all the future things that are yet to unfold. And in this world, there is freedom where human constraints melt away and we become infinite and unbounded potentiality. We all have these funnels of reception, and when we bring our funnels of consciousness and our minds together, we can accomplish anything. Remember the fall of the Berlin Wall? 
We as a collective did that. I believe that over a period of time, people built a momentum with their minds and thoughts coalescing together. We can have similar influence around the planet now. Think Myanmar, Yemen, fixing the pandemic, manifesting equity across the board to all people. I am currently watching the documentary, The Black Church, and it is a little project um, that the group Spirit in Action that Leila Ananda has uh, spearheaded. And it is a four hour film, and I've just um, finished the, the first hour, but what I've gathered and I'm surmising here is that um, the enslaved people um, upon, you know, doing, you know, getting indoctrinated with Christianity, they uh, made uh, faith houses, places where they would go to congregate, to support one another, to find solace and peace and calm. And it is with that intense emotional energy and back of the thoughts and the words and their song created the environment of ch for change. Hence, the Civil War supposedly got rid of slavery. <laughs> now, we know that the details of that didn't come out quite exactly as was prayed for, but the evolution of shift and change is always at hand. We still and always will have the power to direct change by inviting in and ushering in uh, actually believing in the power of this big wide world of omniscient, omnipotent, omnipresent, luminous God, spirit, all there is. So how big is our belief? That is the question we should challenge ourselves with. We know that this beautiful world of peace and abundance and equity is available, but how much do we, do we believe that it is part of our real experience and our real world? Do we truly embody this truth or do we unconsciously and lazily keep our attention on the news cycles of fear, violence, lack, and basically frustration? I, I'm so frustrated by the fact that I feel so unempowered with these massive injustices happening. But let's go back to that funnel. Let's believe the goodness and bounty flowing in. Envision it, breathe it in, believe it into existence. I like to turn my lungs into a funnel-like receptacle and on every expanding inhalation, I invite as much peace and calm as I can muster. Believe it and breathe it in. Now, slowly, slowly stop this little minute, mini meditation. And uh, here's a little reminder of some geometry lessons. As a former middle school math teacher, <laughs> this is where my mind goes. We know that a cone-like funnel ends at a point, or a vertex as it is called. And that vertex is us. This beautiful influx of unlimited good is a vision, right? But a vision is something to view, separate, out there, like a framed photograph. That big, wonderful world of peace, balance, truth of who we are is in this picture. But if we don't bring it in, receive it, and personify it, then it will remain a nice, wishful picture that has yet to be experienced and made real. Like a promise with fingers crossed. This kind of practice is way more effective when we take the vision in, be the actual receptacle of this love, and then be the expression of it. We must receive the energy and more importantly, give it. God and spirit in us, as us, needs us to be the eyes, the ears, and the hands, and the heart, 
and the actions of love. We put what we receive from spirit out into the world in our own special ways. It is all transacted at the point of awareness in the present moment. <sighs> Let's go back to that, med that little funnel meditation. Imagine you as the vertex of your funnel and allow this luminosity to flow into you. Place that vertex wherever you are called to place it. The crown, the heart, the throat chakra. You can place it in Boulder, Colorado, Atlanta. Maybe we should be placing it in the Suez Canal right now. Wherever it is needed at this moment and see the light, accept it, receive it, take it inhalation and pause at the top of this expansion and now slowly release the luminous ideas of health and wholeness on the out breath. Let's do this two more times. Breathe in luminosity, freedom, healing, hold and coalesce these ideas for a few seconds. Breathe out luminosity, freedom, and healing. Breathe in luminosity and any other aspects of God that you would like to manifest. Hold for a few seconds to transmute the ideas into your manifestation and direct the luminosity out. Thank you. Keeping with this consciousness in, of this present moment, could this be called the holy instant? I just encountered this word from the um, court in my fledgling study in the Course of Miracles. And I love that concept, the holy instant. It is not just the now, it is the vertex of our funnel. It is open and receptive to the luminosity of spirit and it does more than receive it. We give and exert our impulse simultaneously into the flow of life, an exchange of energy, a divine reciprocity the flow of consciousness where our pain is transmuted by a shower of unconditional love, infinite wisdom, solutions, and healing energy. There is a perfection in this exchange. There is alchemy. And may I point out that perfection does not necessarily mean that everything is all great and hunky-dory. Perfection means it is all God. It is all Christ in action, constantly shifting. Annie's giggling over here. <laughs> it reveals a new level of understanding, a new expression. If we think perfection is something to strive for or to be obtained, then doesn't that imply that there's an end? No, perfection does not end. Perfection is the infinite and continual unfoldment of spirit with all things, people, places, events, relationships happening all the time at the same time, unfolding in new ways every minute of every day, responding to the impulse of our ideas. The expressions and combinations of these iterations are infinite. We can open up our lives to this perfection with the concept of this funnel, the holy instant of divine give and take, letting go and receiving a moment of gratitude for our oneness. You do not have a funnel, you are a funnel. Here is a guide that I learned in one of my Science of Mind classes uh, years ago, and I don't know who the author is, but it, it represents um, four levels of consciousness. Each one of them is uh, is like a funnel as well. The first one is thinking that life is done to me, a victim to just take in whatever is dished out. 
then there is life is done by me. And this is realizing the creative power of our thoughts. Eventually, we learn that life is done through me, like a conduit. Use me, God. Use my hands. Tell me what to do. Finally, we grow into the truth that life is done as me, in oneness, co-creative Christ consciousness. I've seen all four of these levels play out in my life as I've grown in, in age, in linear age. And as we grow and expand and heal, our world expands and the impact on our world grows. Ah, there is a point or a vertex to this funnel that I've been talking about, right? But there's something about this word that is really interesting I'd like to play with here a little bit. Points can be very sharp and prick you like a needle, but that punctures where the light gets in, right? Points can get very stuck, like when you pound a nail into a wall and you mount your poster of opinion on it. Just think about having to repair that hole in old plaster walls, which I know a lot about lately. Uh, it, it can be a starting point to our journey. It can be the ending to a sentence. It can be the center of a star or the center of a black hole. Two points are separate until a line segment connects them and then they become one new thing, unified. People get stuck in their opinion, which is their point of view. But what if we call it a vertex of view? This shifts thinking to, to be part of something bigger, an angle or a funnel that we can invite new stuff in. And lastly, we don't have to live in a right versus wrong world, a left versus right. Those are the lower rungs of consciousness, um, of dualistic thinking. But from the upper rungs of our greater world, we have a new vantage point. A vertex, a wide angled vertex is afforded us and we can see uncluttered for miles this very beautiful world that we have been given. Cahil Gibran says, I forgot to start my little timer on here. How am I doing on time? Okay. Um, Cahil Gibran has this beautiful poem and I'd like to spend a little bit of time on it. It goes like this, love possesses not, nor would it be possessed, for love is sufficient unto love. When you love, you should not say, God is in my heart, but rather, I am in the heart of God. Now I'm gonna take a little issue with Cahill here because Either way is right. I'd like to focus in on these last two lines. And if you'd like to close your eyes and feel the, the directionality or the, the energy of this, um, feel free. Imagine this line or feel this line. God is in my heart. How does that feel? God is in my heart. Now let's shift to the next line. I am in the heart of God. To me, there's a different directionality of that. I am in the heart of God. God is in our heart. We are in the infinite mind of Christ consciousness 
unlimited potential that we can access at any time by simply putting our attention to it. Life is a big, wide world out there. And it's sort of funny to think everyone's walking around with these funnels, some tall and skinny, some wide and open, coming out of our heads, coming out of our hearts. And yet they are merging, they're brushing up against each other, we're passing each other by in this world, and, and we're merging into one, one life. That's how big our world is. So, thank you. But I did want to say something about aloha. The word aloha. I mean, the... The indigenous, the Hawaiian indigenous meaning is ah, to receive from God. Lo, ha, is that it comes into me and then my face of God expresses outward. So there's this movement and this expansion. Even the syllable ah is an open, expansive sound. And then the face of God. This is our unique face that we get to give outward. So again, it's, it's a beautiful word. I thank the Hawaiians for coming up with it. So thank you, everybody.